Welcome back to Albums Born Today, where we delve into the history behind albums celebrating their release. It's April 15th, 2024. Let's explore what the past has in store for us today. Aftermath is the fourth studio album by English rock band The Rolling Stones, released on April 15, 1966, in the UK. Aftermath marked a significant turning point for The Rolling Stones. It was the first album composed entirely of original material, with all tracks credited to Mick Jagger and Keith Richards. This departure from their earlier reliance on cover songs showcased the band's growing confidence as songwriters. The album was recorded over several months in 1965 and early 1966 at RCA Studios in Hollywood, California, and Regent Sound Studios in London, England. The band worked closely with producer Andrew Legoldum, who encouraged them to experiment with new sounds and musical arrangements. Aftermath features a diverse range of musical styles, including rock, blues, folk, and psychedelia. The album explores themes of love, relationships, and social commentary, with tracks like Paint It Black, Under My Thumb, and Mother's Little Helper, standing out for their bold lyrical content and innovative musical arrangements. Aftermath introduced new instruments and musical techniques to the Rolling Stones sound, including Brian Jones' use of exotic instruments like the sitar on Paint It Black and the dulcimer on Lady Jane. These experimental touches added depth and texture to the band's music, pushing the boundaries of what was possible within the rock genre. Aftermath was a commercial success, topping the UK albums chart and reaching number two on the US Billboard 200 chart. Aftermath is regarded as one of the Rolling Stones' finest albums and a landmark in the development of rock music. Its adventurous approach to songwriting and production set the stage for the band's later experimentation with different genres and musical styles, influencing countless artists in the decades that followed. Survival is the seventh studio album by American rock band Grand Funk Railroad, released on April 1971. After achieving commercial success with their previous albums, Closer to Home and Live Album, Grand Funk Railroad entered the studio to record their follow-up album with high expectations from both fans and critics. The album was recorded at Cleveland Recording Company in Cleveland, Ohio, with producer Terry Knight, who had previously worked with the band on their earlier albums. The recording sessions were characterized by creative freedom and experimentation, with the band exploring new musical directions. Survival features a mix of hard rock, blues rock, and psychedelic influences, showcasing the band's trademark raw energy and powerful sound. The album's songs address themes of social issues, personal struggles, and the quest for freedom, reflecting the turbulent political and cultural climate of the early 1970s. Survival spawned several hit singles, including Foot Stompin' Music and Rock and Roll Soul both of which achieved commercial success and received heavy radio airplay. These songs helped broaden the band's appeal and solidify their status as one of the leading rock acts of the era. Survival was a commercial success, reaching number six on the US Billboard 200 chart and receiving positive reviews from critics. Survival is regarded as one of Grand Funk Railroad's most successful and enduring albums capturing the spirit of the band's live performances and showcasing their evolution as songwriters and musicians. Its timeless songs and powerful sound continue to resonate with rock fans around the world, cementing its legacy as a classic of the genre. Second Helping is the second studio album by American rock band Leonard Skinner, released on April 15, 1974. After the success of their debut album and its hit single Free Bird, Leonard Skinner faced the challenge of following up with a strong sophomore effort. The album was recorded at Studio One in Doraville, Georgia, with Al Cooper returning as producer. The band's lineup remained largely unchanged, with Ronnie Van Zandt on vocals, Gary Rossington, Alan Collins, and Ed King on guitars, Billy Powell on keyboards, Leon Wilkison on bass, and Artemis Pyle on drums. Second Helping continues Leonard Skinner's signature blend of Southern rock, blues, and country influences. The album features a mix of hard-hitting rockers and heartfelt ballads, with songs that explore themes of love, loss, and life on the road. Second Helping produced several hit singles, including Sweet Home Alabama, Don't Ask Me No Questions, 
and Call Me the Breeze. Sweet Home Alabama, in particular, became one of the band's most iconic songs and a southern rock anthem. Second Helping was a commercial success, reaching number 12 on the U.S. Billboard 200 chart and receiving positive reviews from critics. The album's memorable songs and tight musicianship helped solidify Leonard Skinner's reputation as one of the leading bands in the southern rock genre. Second Helping is regarded as one of Leonard Skinner's greatest albums and a classic of the southern rock genre. Its timeless songs, including Sweet Home Alabama, continue to resonate with audiences and are frequently heard on classic rock radio stations. Ultra is the ninth studio album by English electronic music band Depeche Mode, released on April 14, 1997. After the tumultuous period surrounding the recording and touring of their previous album Songs of Faith and Devotion, which included personal struggles and tensions within the band, Depeche Mode faced the challenge of regrouping and redefining their sound. The album was recorded at several studios around the world, including Abbey Road Studios in London, Electric Lady Studios in New York City, and Larrabee Sound Studios in Los Angeles. The band worked with producer Tim Simenone, known for his work with Bomb the Bass and other electronic acts. Ultra features a darker and more introspective sound compared to some of Depeche Mode's previous albums. The lyrics explore themes of loss, addiction, and redemption, reflecting the band members' personal struggles during this period. Despite the somber tone, the album maintains Depeche Mode's signature blend of electronic and alternative rock elements. Ultra produced several hit singles, including Barrel of a Gun, It's No Good, and Home. These songs received positive reviews from critics and achieved commercial success, with It's No Good becoming one of Depeche Mode's most successful singles. Ultra was a commercial success, reaching the top 10 in multiple countries and receiving positive reviews from critics. Despite the departure of Alan Wilder, who left the band during the recording process, Ultra demonstrated Depeche Mode's resilience and ability to evolve their sound while maintaining their artistic integrity. Ultra is regarded as one of Depeche Mode's strongest albums, showcasing their continued relevance and influence in the electronic music genre. Its introspective lyrics and atmospheric soundscapes resonate with audiences, and the album remains a fan favorite among Depeche Mode's extensive discography. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more content. Feel free to leave your thoughts and suggestions in the comments below. Keep the music alive, and we'll see you in the next video.